Hi everyone, welcome to Dave's Bonsai. It is finally here, episode number 15 of the Bonsai Pot Tank. It's time for the reveal. Well, here we are in the plant room, and just over my left shoulder is the bonsai pot tank, but we can't show it to you now. I gotta keep you in suspense a little bit longer. No fast forwarding though, a lot of good stuff to see on the show today. I wanna start off by shouting out to my mom. Hey mom, I hope you're watching live with everybody else on this premiere of the bonsai pot tank episode number 15. And uh, say hi to Gramps, mom. So this is my mom's dad over my shoulder and we affectionately call them Gramps. And uh, so Gramps is always looking over the shoulder uh, as we create the bonsai uh, magic here in the plant room. So a shout out to my mom and her husband, my stepdad, Yogi, um, big supporters. I wanna thank everybody actually. I, I could just put a, I could do a blanket thank you, but I do wanna shout out a couple specifics today before we get into the action of the show. So I have a pretty big contingency of viewers up in Canada. So a big shout out to Canada this uh, evening. Uh, can't thank Nigel Saunders enough for his support. Um, had a chance to sit down with him a few months back and have my inaugural premiere uh, episode of Up North Bonsai, the podcast. The link will be down below to the website where you can find the podcast where Nigel and I, not Nigel and I uh, chatted up. And uh, you can also uh, get the podcast at Apple Podcasts um, and listen up to uh, uh, up North Bonsai. So that was super fun. Nigel uh, supporting the YouTube channel here. It, it's been a great uh, ride. I've had a blast. You know, Nigel said once uh, in the interview with me that when he hit about 14,000 subscribers on YouTube, people would say, there's 14,000 people that like Bonsai? Well, Nigel, you're up to now 188,000 subscribers to your channel, and, and I'm over uh, 1,400 now. So I haven't hit the 14,000 yet, yet, Nigel, but uh, 1,400. I'm blown away that 1,400 people are interested in watching my Bonsai channel. There are plenty of people in the Bonsai world, so uh, I hope those numbers keep growing. I hope uh, everybody supports the cause for lifelong learning. Um, and so a couple more shout, shout outs. Um, Matt has been a big supporter of the channel. Thank you, Matt. And Matt, I don't even know where you're from. Uh, but Matt's the one in the series of the uh, Bonsai show here, the Bonsai Pot Tank series. When we talked about what fish to put in the, on the tank, he suggested, he was one of many people to suggest Cardinal Tetras. And here's the thing, everyone. I've been looking for Cardinal Tetras in the local pet stores since I started this project. And Matt and a few others suggested Cardinals and they have not been able to be found. They have the little price tags for Cardinal Tetras, but they're never around, so people must really love them and soak them up pretty fast. So, um, uh, spoiler alert, we don't have Cardinal Tetras in the tank, but we'll see what the, the fish we do put in the tank a little bit later in the show. So thanks to Matt for your support. Bald Yeti has come out of the woodwork, and Bald Yeti, you know, you've been watching all, you've been going back and watching all the history of the channel and just having a blast and, and super supportive of what I've been doing and can't thank you enough for the positive comments. And if anybody gets anything out of this channel, it just makes me happy. And I get so much from watching all of you folks uh, on your channels. Uh, Nigel, of course, I've been watching Blue Jay bon Bonsai. And what I love about the Blue Jay Bonsai Nigel Saunders connection is that Blue Jay Bonsai started their channel because they were inspired by Nigel. And so they're pretty new to Bonsai. So father and son team, uh, Jay and James. So congratulations on your channel. Uh, I see. I think you're uh, over 600 subscribers now. So if you wanna check out Blue Jay Bonsai, check that out. Um, and uh, so Canada has uh, is second only uh, next, uh, tied with UK with uh, the support of my channel. So I have to tip my hat off to uh, the Canadian folks. And I do wear my Canadian hat quite often and I got a shirt that I wear and it never fails to get a comment from, from you folks up there in Canada. So north of the border is supporting Dave's Bonsai. Can't thank you enough. And my last shout out today goes to one of my Minnesota Bonsai Society members. Uh, we've got a guy in the group, uh, his name is Henry. And Henry now has his own YouTube channel, Henry Two Bonsai, T-W-O. So Henry Two Bonsai. Uh, Henry has just been an amazing supporter of the Minnesota Bonsai Society and he just works so hard to try to keep up with all the knowledge that gets uh, shared at the MBS uh, meetings, uh, some of the workshops and the um, Bonsai Basics classes and he goes to as many things as possible and uh, 
Uh, Henry, good luck with your channel, and, and I keep watching to see how you're growing. Uh, very new to YouTube, but he's been working on bonsai for a long time, and I just love his enthusiasm, and he'll talk bonsai with anybody anytime, so I do appreciate that support there as well. So, And of course, thanks to all family and friends who, uh, of course, who've tuned in and watched a little bit of Dave's bonsai. With that, though, I know you don't want to sit there and listen to me chit-chat about that too long, so we got to get right to it. So here's the scoop. We had 14 episodes of this bonsai pot tank, so let's take you back to where it all got started. We got little snippets from all the shows. We'll bring you back to the very beginning, and yep, Dave did his uh, hand at some sketching to kind of give you my vision, and although I'm not even close to my brother's artistic ability, it helps me with my vision of bonsai, and let's take a peek at that to get us started on the journey of the bonsai pot tank. So here we have my little rendering of a potential bonsai slash fish tank. This is kind of the uh, front view of what I, I envision. And the fish tank part is in the middle. And we've got some stone and some earth over here and some stone and earth over here. And I want a lot of rocks because when you look through the fish tank, you'll see the rock structure. And then when you look at the top part of the tree, it'll be like trees growing on rocks. And I get my uh, inspiration from the Superior Hiking Trail in the North Shore. I got this image of a tree that looks like it's just growing right on a rock cliff. Now, it's not the most majestic tree, but I just love this image. And it just said, oh, if I could create a bonsai image someday of that, that would be really cool. So I'm hoping when you look at this from eye level, you'll be able to see water and some fish swimming around. You'll be able to see this land. This will be wood right here or rocks. The rocks will bleed into the water tank. So there is a glimpse of a little bit of artwork of my vision of what could be. There you have it, the starting point of the Bonsai Pot Tank project. The sketches, the picture from up north, Superior Hiking Trail, the Cascade Trail in specific, you gotta go check that one out. Has some great deep river gorges uh, with the rock structures and the trees. Inspiration for some of my Bonsai indeed. Also a lot of pictures up there with the uh, roots that are exposed. Uh, some future projects down the road. Now, when I was talking with Nigel Saunders during the Up North podcast, one of the things we did talk about was native trees. And I really liked what he had to say about native trees and about the art of bonsai and what it kind of means to him. That made this project particularly um, accurate with what I envision with a lot of my bonsai trees. So let's take a peek at what Nigel had to say about native trees and uh, why you kind of make some of the bonsai that you end up making. I think most people want their tree to look like a bonsai when they first get a bonsai. They want to show people, this is my bonsai, and people say, oh yeah, I saw that in the Karate Kid or something. As you get into the hobby, you want your trees to remind you of something from your life or to give you feeling, uh, okay. to take you away to a special time or place in your life. Or, you know, I went camping up north there and I remember this birch growing on the edge of a rock. And Right. You want to feel that feeling again, or you want something that reminds you of that, that experience you had in your life. And I think native trees give you that experience. I love that. I love those words from Nigel. The bonsai that I create brings up uh, uh, memories of my past, of uh, my hikes with my son, uh, my uh, trips with my family up north, uh, the cabin, um, the Superior Hiking Trail, and now trips all over the Grand Canyon, the Redwoods last summer all those things, and those inspire me to make uh, some of the projects I do with bonsai. So this bonsai pot tank, a combination of all the passions in my life, so it means something to me, right? It's not just a tree, not just a forest that I try to make and copy someone else. It really uh, uh, comes back to what, what I envision and some of the memories from my past. So we're gonna move along to episode two now of the bonsai pot tank, and in this episode, I begin to work on the base that will hold the secondary pots for the trees and the middle fish tank eventually. With the base pot complete, it was time for a quick gray stain that I believed would match well with the rocks I knew I had standing by. Then it was time to construct the two sides or secondary pots that the trees would actually be in. These are gonna do just fine. I'll just have to figure out how I'm going to connect them. 
and we'll be able to go on from here. Hey everyone, welcome to Dave's Bonsai. So we get to start today in the plant room where I have to change the pot on the left hand side and the pot on the right hand side. The hole that goes all the way down to the base of this bonsai pot would be way too deep of a pot for the trees that are going to be way up high. So we have to put a new floor, if you will, on the right and left pot structure that I made, kind of the frame I made. We have to put a new floor on there. But before I can put a floor on there, I have to add some wood, some more trim, because what I want to do is have the floor a little bit in so we can have multiple layers of rocks kind of staggering in. Well, let's just show you what I'm doing. From the fish tank, there's gonna be some pond liner that comes over here and then I'll drape it over here and then I'll have some extra pieces up here that'll drape up on the rock. And so um, the uh, tube will go through all of those layers. So now we have to drill one, two, three holes into the wood here and then go trace it on the inside piece and then we'll be able to have these stable in the fish pond. It looks like our holes are gonna work. The pond liner, something like this, not this one. This is what I cut for the bottom before, which I will not need anymore. This will go and be the fish tank, or a pond if you will. And I'll have straps that come out over here and attach to the wood and hold on like that. And then we'll have some fish tank seal and some rocks and we'll have all kinds of sealant there. So when we cut these right here, and here, and here, the water will go down and they'll drain into these drain holes. And uh, we won't have a lot of water pooling in the uh, bonsai pots. We like good drainage. In part five, I tackle the drainage pipes in the bonsai pot tank. How will that water seep through the bonsai pot tank into a reservoir that won't ruin the inner workings of the pot? I need them to stop and not go all the way down to the ground. I will put some pond liner on the other side, which will kind of hold these in place a little bit, but not massively securely. And so what I figured I would do is I have a piece of one by three, which matches the level of the lip here. This is the underneath side, but the legs will keep it off the ground. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a piece of bonsai wire and I'm gonna make a bonsai wire go from this side to this side and twist it off. And the wire will sit right here. We'll line it up so these tubes will rest right on that and won't be able to fall further out. If there's a little pressure on the tube, it might bend the, um, the wire a little bit, but nothing to uh, uh, make it come apart. I was able to find my roll of aluminum flat, I don't know what you would call this, but I can make a connection here with a screw into there and I can bend it because it's flexible and I can attach it onto this top piece. I could even do it right here on the lip part so I don't bother this. And then over here I can go right from the bottom here to this lip part. I can do that in the front as well. And then this would be connected and would move side by side. It wouldn't be a strong connection, but remember when we start putting rocks on here and we seal some of this in with the flex seal first and then some uh, sealant with the fish tank and the glasses in place, rocks start to be built up on here. The weight of the rocks and the sealant is gonna keep it all in place, but I wanna make sure it doesn't jiggle around when I'm in the creative process. So I think we'll put a little bit of this on there. So we gotta cut this up and we'll be good to go. We will punch a little hole in there for our tubes to fit nice and snug right down in there. That'll add a little extra friction in our tubes. So this has to dry for the next 24 to 48 hours. Next, I decided to add a few coats of poly for a little sheen, and then I secured those PVC pipes into the structure. I went ahead and I put some slits in here 
where the tube fits down. And I made a little forceful push down to the other one. And then I marked where I have to cut it. So now I have to find my saw. There's the bottom. I got a little bit of bend here. So I'm gonna bend the wire. And then the wires right here are holding the three plastic parts in. And then we'll get a piece of uh, pond liner in here. Plexiglass up here, plexiglass there, and we'll be good to go. We've completed six episodes of the Bonsai Pot Tank, and now we get to move to what was a pretty exciting time for me is the structure of the fish tank. I actually got to finally put the plexiglass uh, pieces on, and so we could have a fish tank, actually, not just a couple of wooden pots that would have trees in it eventually. So episode number seven, we put on the plexiglass. Now is the really fun part of this project for me. I'm ready to secure the half inch plexiglass. Um, but before I do that, I have to be very careful not to scratch this side of the surface for sure and inside of here. And I found this rock that comes right to the tip of the plexiglass. So something like this. I got the uh, quick set cement that's holding them into place real nice and firmly. And remember, that's mainly holding the shape of the bonsai pot for the bonsai soil to be in here. My main goal for today is to secure this piece of pond liner where it needs to go. So I just need this pond liner to wrap around this side ever so carefully over the top so it doesn't make any more bulges down at the bottom. I've let the sealant dry in the fish tank on the back panel and the front panel on the insides here. I just put a second coat on this bottom front side and on the sides here. And now I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to put some sealant around some of these places that I added staples uh, just in case uh, there'd be any leakage when I water the trees. It's Christmas Eve and it's T minus about two hours before the relatives come over and we have our celebration. And the patient side of me, the um, more thoughtful, considerate, think before you act side of me says I shouldn't do this experiment right now. Let's go for it. And we have a drink. It's hard to tell where the leak came through, but it was running off this left side as you look at the front of the tank. And so I'm thinking this corner piece back here, right in this area here, there's still a hole in here. So we have some more silicone. We're gonna go ahead and do some more silicone around all the uh, edges just to be sure again. And then we'll do another test. It's about 48 hours after I did my test. Look at the little shiny spot right here. Yeah, that's one of the staples I put in. That will not be a tight seal. When you're using this fish tank sealer, make sure that you do mask up because it's very potent stuff. You don't want to get in your um, cuts or scrapes or anything. You don't want it to get in your eyes. And you definitely don't want to breathe it in too closely. When you put it in, open this thing up and start putting it in. You're le lean, lean down, bent over, trying to put the sealant in the fumes just come right up in your nose. You can actually feel some slight burning when you breathe it in too much. How do I know that you ask? Well, it says so on the instructions. And then I did it at first and felt it a little bit and realized I better put my mask on.
So why that sealant is drying, I'm starting to think about some uh, rock combinations for the leftover open spaces of the bonsai pot tank. So I have these pre-circle uh, drain screens that can go right there, that can go right there, and can go right there. And then I have three for the other side. That will do next. So I have put this rock on and off about six, seven times, and I just really like how it hugs this side right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna glue this into place right here. Every step closer to the finished project is super exciting when you're working on a project like this. And so now it's the be patient and wait mode. So we're gonna go ahead and let all this dry and I won't do anything else today. I'll have to give it at least 24 hours for this to dry and then 48 hours before water, but maybe I'll start working on the other side and take a peek at some of my rocks. Fun, fun progress on the bonsai pot tank. In part nine, I split some rocks and we continue to create the outside perimeter of the boulders that hug the bonsai pot tank. We have a piece to put up in the front, a piece to put on here. We need some more cement. Incidentally, I did go upstairs with the whole unit and step on the scale and then took it or put it down and then jumped back on the scale. The scale and the pot before these rocks, exactly 40 pounds. Yeah, this should be. Yep, it sounds like rocks in there when you shake them. Can't wait to open those up later. But first, we're gonna put all these on here and the order and the style that we want. In episode 10, I worked to get the right and left side of the pot tank more finished up and ready for bonsai soil, which I do put in and test some of the rock formations. And for the first time, look at potential trees going into the pot. And then it's time for our next water test. I'm all set for test number two. So the last time we did this, we had a little bit of seepage underneath on this side of, of the pot. And there was a, a staple in here that wasn't sealed. Now there was a staple from the pond liner. Um, and I don't remember stapling this in on this side. So that's what's kind of weird. I thought all of this was loose. We only stapled the underneath side. But either way, we now have sealant, and hopefully that sealant's gonna be enough to uh, protect that little bump. Now we're above where the seal stops on the plexiglass on the back side. We're about halfway up this glass right here. Oh, I see a leak. That's unfortunate. The last two things I need to do for tonight is to flex seal all of this, and I need to uh, put on this last piece right here. This will be test number four. I think I'm up to four. As 
As we approach 20 minutes on the test, I can't keep in the excitement. There's no leaks today. It's the first time. I think it's test number four. The fish tank bonsai pot contraption is doing what I envisioned it would do. 40 long minutes into the experiment and there are no leaks down below in the pot. There is gravel, fish tank gravel on the bottom now to stay. With this positive test, I can move on to the next level of the fish tank bonsai pot contraption. So the water is settling. We've got some stuff still floating here. All this stuff will just take some while. We'll get some water circulating in here. We'll maybe put the bubbler in a little later. Maybe set up the filter, add some more water again. But I'm gonna put some bonsai soil now that'll be in the bottom. And we're gonna go ahead and plug this in right here live on camera. And there's our little stream. And we're gonna see if we can get some air in here. There we go. So there's the air, right there. So we'll put that under some rocks. One last look at the uh, stopwatch shows that we're coming in at about 55 minutes here. We're 54.22 and no leaks down below. So we're coming up on the first hour of this test. We've got the fish tank running, the bubbler, the water here. Hey everyone, welcome to Dave's Bonsai. On today's episode, the Bonsai Pot Tank, well, we've got some news. Yeah, it's right over there. <laughs> Did any of you catch that? Got some explaining to do. In episode 12, I reveal that, yeah, I had a leak. I needed to fix that and also get started on the stand that the Bonsai Pot Tank would be placed on. The last show was exciting and everybody was ready for the reveal and we had a leak. Yeah, four or five tests in. About three hours later, after the last video was put to bed, published three hours later when I checked on the little glass underneath the bonsai pot tank, there was a little leak. Ugh. With the break from the bonsai pot tank, I thought I would make the stand for the tank, so that what was next. So I didn't have to worry about any leaks or any rock decoration or tree plantings. Let's make a stand for this. Therefore, I began the construction in the plant room of the stand that's going to hold the bonsai pot tank, which, if you recall, is going to be well over 75 pounds. So this had to be beefy. So part of the reason I'm making this thick stand with two by fours making it super thick and strong is because what I was going to put it on was one a little too high and a little too rickety. I went ahead and got a one, or excuse me, a two by 10. And so I've got that two by 10 with a two by four inner frame where the stand can sit inside. So it gives it a real nice chunky bottom. I got the top with the one by fours where the bonsai pot sits up on top. So it's gonna work out pretty good, I think. I know a lot of you were concerned that I wasn't going to be able to lift this with water, and you're probably right. So now we're going to be able to put this here when it's all done, and we're not going to have to move it anymore once it's done. And I may not get any finish stain on this guy until the springtime. So if we get this set up with trees and water, we'll leave it as is untouched, and then we'll eventually uh, get this thing painted. Episode number 13, working on the waterfall, and I finally get to add some trees. The water has been in the tank for three days, 72 hours, and there's no leaks. Now that the waterfall display has been secured on the sides, we have the tube coming in from the filter. We get to plant some trees today. Taking a step back to help explain my, uh, my vision for this, if we go back to that original picture of that tree on the cliffs up at the North Shore, I wanted these to be a little bit more looking like a Minnesota tree. So I'm gonna go with the Premnas and this one, uh, Benjamina. I like the Benjamina to give it at least one ficus in here. And then we've got the uh, Premna, Premna, Premnas all over the place. So this will become a Premna forest. Now these are loose rocks, so they're not attached to anything, but they'll look natural that way. And I can always repot in the, in the summer or in the spring next year or in the winter down here, whatever I do, I can always rearrange this. See, 
see where this water is going to soak down to. The bonsai pot tank is doing its thing. It's starting to leak down on, on the table now through the uh, holes, the drainage holes at the bottom. We have this really nice cliff face here where we got this tree leaning and got the roots exposed here with some rocks over there. We got these two little ones over here and a couple back here as well. So we have a five planted forest here. Um, and uh, we got to let this thing grow. Absolutely fantastic. Super, super excited about this. And I can't wait to keep going. But we got to stop right here. That's enough for today. We've got five trees in on this side. We'll figure out this side next. We're just going to let it go. We got water on here. We've watered the trees, that is. We'll get some sphagnum moss on this soil a little bit um, so we have a little bit of uh, moisture retention. Um, but it is down in the plant room. We should be good. Super excited to see where this is going to lead to. Hey everyone, welcome to Dave's Bonsai. On today's episode, it's the right side. In episode 14, I was ready to put the trees on the right side of the pot tank and a little bit more touch-up work with the Bonsai pot tank stand. So as you can see, it fits in there okay the way it is now if we scrunch the roots in there and there's some depth to it a little bit, but we're of course gonna trim off some of these roots. So I think this will sit real nice right in here. Okay, so let's see. I kind of like it just like that. There, tamp down some of the soil into the cracks of the roots of this tree. And now we're gonna lift it up a little bit so we can have a little bit higher planting. And there we go. As I pull back, it's a nice chance to see the pond fish tank come to fruition. We're getting so close. So we have our five trees in the middle. We have our big leaning tree back there, and this one we trimmed up with the big old Y on here. A leaning tree on the left, some small trees on the left as well. We'll make sure all those stay alive. And if they don't, we have some other cuttings to uh, plant in there. We've got the waterfall that's doing its thing right now. Um, <clears throat> we got a dead tree in here that the fish can swim around. We're gonna have to move this onto the tank stand though pretty soon, which we're also fixing. So before we wrap up, the stand, I put some trim work on there. And just today, before I started working on the trees, I was able to uh, put um, a coat of um, super glaze, a super glaze on the top only of the fish uh, tank stand. I want that glaze to be super thick and so the water won't penetrate the wood. Because when I water this, I'm gonna spill water every time I water over the edges a little bit. Some might drip around. So we're gonna make it super uh, thick with that super glaze. We've got the left side with the sphagnum moss that I didn't show you last time, but it is in place. The trees are all doing okay, except for this one, we might have to replace it. We got three trees in here. Actually, we got five, six, seven trees, because this is a cluster of five. We'll see if that grows up tall and becomes the centerpiece over here, tall with this wide tree down here and low. And then this leaning tree over here can go over the pond. We've got the Ted tree in here. The water is running. After a few final touch-ups on the stand that's gonna hold the bonsai pot tank, we're gonna add some fish and reveal the final project. I'm gonna let the pictures and some sound tell the rest of the story. down first I think. You said you put like pads on the bottom or something? I did. Yeah. It's pretty close. I think your side back or my side.
As I just sat down to finish up the show here, one of the shrimp moved. So I think it was the rainbow shrimp and not the ghost shrimp. We've got the two shrimp in the tank. We've got the quarry that I put in. And I, I didn't show that earlier in the video, so I was just gonna talk about that now. And as I sat down, I noticed the quarry was sitting right down about here. We've got the ember uh, tetras that uh, might turn a little bit more red in color. And right now they're, they're swimming up here by my finger here by the close part of the glass. But we've got the uh, quarries that kind of hide behind the rocks. They're gonna clean up the bottom of the tank a lot. The two uh, shrimp will clean up the tank. One is an algae eater shrimp, and that is the uh, rainbow uh, the rainbow shrimp. That's, that rainbow shrimp is gonna eat some of the algae in the tank. And then the other shrimp will eat some other uh, pieces, parts, you know, and waste in the tank. And then we've got our six ember tetras. So the choice was going to be between uh, the Neon Tetra and the Cardinal Tetra. And as I mentioned before, the Cardinal Tetras, Cardina Tetras were nowhere to be found. And so I was gonna go with a black Neon Tetra, but I have black soil. So I thought these Ember Tetras that will not get much bigger than they are. So what you've seen with the uh, uh, footage of the Ember Tetras, that's about the size they're gonna stay. So they're really gonna fit the size of this structure really, really nice. I was a little nervous at one point when I made this pot super, super thick. I was like, why did I make it so big? But to fit the landscape and the size of the overall project and with these big rock structure cliffs right here, maybe this isn't so bad. But there's no trees, there's no roots that'll be below this surface right here. Everything is from this surface about and higher. But that's okay. Remember our pots are kind of the frame of the picture. Oh, there he is. He's on the surface of the rock right by my finger right there. So he's white. And actually the more he eats, the more he'll turn dark because you'll be able to see the food morsels in his body. But he's right there in front of my finger. Um, moving around right there a little bit. There we go. Awesome. He's moving back and forth. So I don't mind the size of the pot so much anymore. I did put pads at the bottom to give it a slight raise under here so the wood doesn't sit in any dripping water. The water is releasing into the buckets that I have down below pretty well. There's a little spillage on this side, so we'll, we'll get smaller containers, by the way. I won't have those five gallon buckets, but for right now, they fit in there real nice. I think putting on this sheen up here is really gonna be positive in the end because it's gonna make sure that water just doesn't soak in, but I will clean up the water anytime I have water dripping on. I've noticed the left side of the bonsai pot tank stays a lot more wet than the right side. This side is already drier than this today. And I think I know why. Part of it is with the bubbler. The bubbler is releasing uh, you know, moisture into the air. You can see it when you're at this eye level. You can see some water just that perks in the air. So I might turn that off at times, not leave it on 24 seven. But then the waterfall, which by the way, I added a secondary pump. I don't think I mentioned that in any of the videos. I bought an extra pump um, that would, it's just a little mini cube of a pump and it's providing now the flow of the river 
that keeps things looking a little bit more natural like it's a real flow of river. That's quite a gush of river. If I have it too low, it sometimes wants to go and hug underneath the rock. And I think I lose a little bit of water level with the water that hugs the rock, but then it goes into the bonsai pot where the uh, roots are growing, and then it goes down and it releases in the bucket ever so slowly if I'm really close to having water up to the edge. So the higher the water, the more I'll lose. But this side seems to keep moist a lot longer. So I don't know if the water is seeping out of uh, the waterway a little bit. So I have to be careful and watch that because we don't want these swimming in, in um, water all the time because then they won't grow as well either. But these, I definitely have to water more often than these because this one already, just the visual, this is a lot drier and this is uh, keeping some of its moisture. The tree in the back that was a little bit droopy after I planted came back to life. It perked up and it's fine. We've lost uh, definitely some leaves if I uh, go right here and pluck this leaf off. So leaves have come off. Uh, we've lost some, some leaves on all the trees. Um, they're in this transplant mode, a little bit stressful. I've got the super big light up top and I made that hood for it. The light on top is making this super overexposed video wise so I have to be careful. I can't show you won't see it as naturally as I will because it's so bright the camera doesn't know what to do with that light and the light for me and the light for down here. So you'll have super dark down here and super light up there. But it's going to be a really nice grow light I think for these trees because it is a good uh, foot above the top of this tree before you actually get to the light. But it's a super bright. It's brighter than any of the other lights that I have. We got the Fisher guy in the back corner. I've never ordered that figurine until this project. I thought, you know what, okay, I'm gonna add a little bit of spice to this one. Um, I've been joking around with some of my family members, my stepfather the other and I, uh, we were talking about getting a loon, you know, maybe putting a loon for the lake. We take, turn the bubbler off and have a loon just floating there for uh, uh, some of the time. <laughs> so we'll see. But for the first go at this project, I'm very, very pleased. The rock structures are looking fairly natural. Um, I can change this top structure anytime I want. I like how it flows down towards the water with this uh, waterfall section. The fisher guy in the back, the dead tree inside, the fish are swimming around right now, right there. Um, I think it's okay. I'll be very, very curious now how this is all going to grow over the coming year down here in the plant room. If you remember back in earlier episodes, we talked about moving this outside maybe once in a while. It's not going to happen. Yeah, I'd have to have the water about halfway full and my son and I, who you saw, shift just three or four feet from the table over to the stand. Um, we could do it. It could happen. But I don't know that that's necessary. So we've got good indoor plants, the Premnas, even though they would love to be out in the sun in the summertime as well. That's why I got a really heavy duty light and we'll just hope for the very, very best. Um, so I'm, I'm at a loss for anything more to share without just getting too redundant. So there you have it, the Bonsai Pot Tank. I wanna thank everybody again for their support and watching all the episodes with the little comments saying, keep going, it's looking great. Um, it's been a fun project and we'll see where it goes down the road. So hey, this show can't get much longer. I'll probably have everybody falling asleep. So let's bring it to a close, shall we? Thank you so much again. Take care of you. Take care of your bones eye. And we'll catch you very soon on the next project or the next single tree. Can't wait for that. Bye-bye.